वेलकम टू आर चैन व्यूअर्स द टॉपिक फॉर टूडेज वीडियो टूटोरियल इज चेंजिंग पैराडाइम्स इन द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ मेजर पैंक्रेटिक इंजरी इन दिस वीडियो टूटोरियल वी हैव डिस्कस इन डिटेल अबाउट द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ पैंक्रेटिक इंजरी एज पर द लेटेस्ट ईस्ट टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन गाइडलाइंस वी हैव डिस्कस स्टेप बाई स्टेप मैनेजमेंट फॉर ईच क्रिएट ऑफ पैंक्रेटिक इंजरी एंड रिव्यू द लेटेस्ट लिटरेचर we have given two case scenarios also in this presentation and uh, have tried to make a plan according to the present consensus so stay tuned so the anatomical area of the pancreas has been classically called as a tiger country because here there is a fight between two tigers that one tiger is surgeon another tiger is pancreas and historically it has been, it has been uh, uh, no no go area and uh, surgeons were advised not to venture in this area otherwise it will lead to lot of morbidity mortality and blood blood bath because it is a fight between two tigers as i said one is surgeon another is pancreas but the things have changed now and uh, we are frequently visiting this tiger country and coming safely and patient are going home safely this is the first case scenario that in that we have a 29 year old male with a history of road traffic accident patient had uh, right uh, pain right upper abdomen at presentation and an episode of vomiting except for the abdominal distension there was no other physical finding initially patient was managed at local hospital and was referred to us after 3 days after suspicion of pancreatic trauma based on ultrasound abdomen on examination patient was hemodynamically stable with no positive physical finding and his laboratory parameters were normal except for a low hemoglobin that was 9.4 mg and raised serum alveolus that was 7301 international unit per ml on ct abdomen it showed complete transaction at the neck of pancreas with fluid between pancreas and splenic vein with grade 2 liver injury so this is the CT scan of the same patient as we discussed, in which inside the circle, as highlighted by the arrow, there is a complete transaction of the pancreas, and uh, it is reaching almost up to the splenic vein. And as as I said, there was a fluid between pancreas and splenic vein. So there will be a grade three splenic injury as per the. as classification dear friends please make your plan of management for this patient and uh, i'll discuss our management at the end of this video tutorial and uh, after reviewing the literature i hope uh, we will be more wiser and will be able to manage this patient more efficiently so kindly make your plan right now write it down and uh, let's see what is your plan and uh, does it match with our plan or not coming to the pancreatic injury so brief introduction it is a relatively uncommon organ to be injured in blunt trauma the incidence is 5% in blunt trauma around 6% for gunshot injury abdomen and 2% for the stab injury penetrating trauma abdomen is the most common uh, cause of pancreatic injury which accounts for more than 70% uh, cases of pancreatic injury In India, approximately 1.18 percent of all trauma admission had has associated pancreatic injury. Isolated pancreatic injuries very uncommon and rare. As I said, coexisting injuries are very common with pancreatic injury, and there are chances of 50 percent to 98 percent associated uh, intra-abdominal injury if a patient has pancreatic injury. The associated pancreatic tract disruption in pancreatic injury patient has 15 percent incidence. the morbidity of this uh, trauma is very high that is 36 to 60% and mortality is 9% to 30% the majority of deaths occur within the first 48 hours due to massive bleeding and its complication the late cause of death is due to sids sepsis and multi organ failure which accounts for the major deaths after 48 hours so how to diagnose a patient first be clinical and we should have strong suspicion if there is a history of blunt trauma or a heavy object falling uh, on the abdomen 
especially in the epigastric region or there is a road traffic accident with handlebar injury or seat belt injury another is biochemical that will be discussed in detail and radiological coming to the biochemical analysis the corner stone of diagnosis is amylase and lipase level so serum amylase elevated in 80% of patient with blunt pancreatic injury an elevated amylase level mandates a direct evaluation to rule out pancreatic injury and studies studies has shown that amylase level upon admission are not very sensitive that we will see again in subsequent uh, video the diagnostic yield of amylase is time sensitive the normal serum amylase is found in 35% of patient with complete main pancreatic duct transection a value obtained 3 to 6 hours after presentation has much higher accuracy in predicting the pancreatic trauma so serial or delayed measurement of amylase are more useful so this is a study published in annual surgery by takishima et al so they have shown the relationship between the serum amylase level on admission and time elapsed from injury to admission so they have studied total 73 patient and uh, they noticed that the serum amylase level within 3 hours of the admission had a normal level in 35% patient uh, in first one hour, 21% patient in 1 to 2 hours after injury and 15.4% uh, patient, uh, patient in 2 to 3 hours injury. If the amylase level was sent in 3 to 4 hours and uh, or 4 to 5 hours or more than 6 hours after injury, the number of patients with the normal MIL level dropped to 0% and uh, this is a very significant uh, study and uh, so any patient in which we are suspecting clinically uh, there is a possibility of pancreatic injury or the symptoms are not explained uh, by other investigation method we should send a serial MIL level especially after 6 hour and if they are rising they are, that are uh, pointed towards the pancreatic injury. For radi radiological evaluation, ultrasound accident fast will be part of evaluation of any blunt trauma abdomen but usually ultrasound is not sensitive enough to pick up the pancreatic injury and uh, the gold standard for diagnosing, pan uh, diagnosing pancreatic injury is CCT pancreatic protocol as pa uh, the pancreas is a retroperitoneal organ so the ultrasound has very low sensitivity for detecting the pancreatic injury. So CT is the initial study of choice, as I said, it is the gold standard for diagnosing the pancreatic injury. Earlier CT scan has overall sensitivity of 68% and the reference for these data I have given in the video. False negative uh, in less than 12 hours after trauma is chances are 20 to 40% that we should remember that CT may not pick up the initial uh, pancreatic injury uh, finding in, in uh, less than 12 hours as there are little change in the density and minimal separation of the lesser pancreatic fragment. multi detector CT scan in portrominous phase has higher accuracy for detecting the pancreatic injury. Approximately 5-10% to of MPD injury are missed on CT scan and if there is a clinical doubt and in the scenario of raised mileage level and normal CT scan, we should repeat the CT scan after 8-12 to hours after the admission to detect any missed injury of the pancreas. Uh, in multi-center study, examining the use of CT scan by asked that the American Institution of Surgeon for Trauma had given these signs as a hard sign for pancreatic injury that is active bleeding from the pancreatic tissue, there is a pancreatic hematoma or laceration, there is a diffuse enlargement or edema of the pancreas or low pancreatic attenuation. And they said that laceration of more than 50% of gland thickness on CT scan should raise concern for pancreatic ductal injury. So this is the ASK classification of pancreatic injury uh, in which the pancreatic injury has been graded from grade 1 to 5. Grade 1 and 2 has two components that is hematoma laceration and grade 3 onwards are laceration only. So grade 1 if hematoma is a minor contusion without duct injury or tissue loss or laceration this is a minor laceration without duct injury or tissue loss. Grade 2 hematoma involving more than one portion, we will see in the picture also, and laceration with disruption less than 50% of circumference. As I said, if the circumference involved is more than 50%, we should suspect uh, the major pancreas, the MPD injury. Grade 3 laceration, there is a distal transaction or pancreas injury with duct injury. If duct is involved, it becomes 
ग्रेट थ्री थ्री एंड ग्रेट फोर इज लेसरेशन विच इज प्रोक्सिमल टू स्पीरमजेंट्रिक वेन और दिस इज मेजर बाइकॉम इंजरी प्रोक्सिमल टू दी स्पीरमजेंट्रिक वेन ग्रेट फाइव इज अगेन लेसरेशन दिस इज मैसिव डिस्प्शन ऑफ द पैंक्रेटिक हेट सो फिगर बी दैट इज द ग्रेट वन इंजरी दैट इज अ हिमेटोमा विच इज इन्वॉल्विंग ओनली वन पोर्शन ऑफ द पैंक्रिया दैट इज नेक इन दिस केस एंड और लेसरेशन विच इज नॉट इन्वॉल्विंग एनी टिश्यू लॉस और दे इज नो डक्ट रिसेप्शन ग्रेट टू इज वेन द हिमेटोमा इज इन्वॉल्विंग मोर देन वन पोर्शन दैट इज इन दिस केस इज एक्सटेंडिंग फ्रॉम द बॉडी टू द हेड एंड नेक इज ऑल्सो इन्वॉल्व और देर इज ए लेसरेशन विथ टिश्यू लॉस विद और डक्ट इंजरी ग्रेट थ्री इज वेन देर इज ए डिस्टल ट्रांजेक्शन और देर इज अ पैनिकाइन इंजरी विच इज इन्वॉल्विंग द डक्ट दैट इज लीकिंग टू लीडिंग टू द लीक ऑफ द पैंक्रेटिक जूसेस ग्रेट फोर विल बी लेसरेशन विच इज प्रोक्सिमल टू द स्पीरमिजेंटिक वेन और देर इज अ मेजर टिश्यू लॉस प्रोक्सिमल टू स्पीरमिजेंटिक वेन टू वर्ज द ड्यूडनम एंड ग्रेट फाइव इज मेजर रिसेप्शन ऑफ द पैंक्रेटिक हैट What is the role of MRI or MRCP in the management of pancreatic injury? So uh, we have to understand the concept of dynamic secretin stimulated MRCP, in which we give secretin to enhance the secretion of uh, pancreas. And uh, I don't think it is available at much center, but theoretically we should be know we should be knowing about this modality of MRI or MRCP for diagnosing the pancreatic injury. so uh, as we all be know that it is non invasive and uh, uh, if we add secretin stimulated mrcp then it is a dynamic deformation for continuing leakage it is more useful in chronic or delayed setting difficult in acute setting due to its a time consumption only a few case series for its use for pancreatic coma so no current valid recommendation can be made for this technology so if you have level we can use it but uh, there's no literature evidence that it is should be done or should not be done interparenchymal hematoma may cause duct compression showing as a loss of duct on mrcp that we have to keep in mind if there is a interparenchymal uh, hematoma then it, on mrcp that will show a discontinuation of the duct and uh, it will upgrade the injury grade to grade 3 or higher and depreciating from two duct disruption may require ercp ERCP, as I said, it is the gold standard for diagnosing the major pancreatic injury, and in defining the continuity of main pancreatic duct, especially in the doubtful cases, and precise loca localization of the site of ductal injury. Uh, during ERCP, it is also becomes therapeutic also that we can place stents, and useful adjunct to non-operative management, and it is a complement to surgical treatment of proximal pancreatic injuries. The risk is during ERCP there can be exacerbation of the pancreatitis. and sepsis from overfilling of the disrupted duct this is an ercp image which is showing a leak uh, or exacerbation of the contrast from main pancreatic duct just due of uh, grade 3 injury and there is a major uh, disruption of the pancreatic duct leading to a leakage of the pancreatic juices there is an uh, classification by takashima et al of pancreatic injury by ercp in which it is grade 1 to grade 3 grade 1 is normal pancreatic duct on ercp grade 2 is injury to the branches of main pancreatic duct on ercp with contrast exacerbation inside the parenchyma and 2b is when there is a contrast exacerbation into the retroperitoneal space so grade 2 is for basically uh, branches of the main pancreatic duct not the main pancreatic duct when main pancreatic duct injured then it becomes grade 3 and grade 3a will be injury to the main pancreatic duct on ercp at the body or tail or if it is proximal in the head then it becomes grade 3b coming to the management of pancreatic injury this is a landmark paper by benesa fils et al uh, and it is a practice management guidelines from the eastern association for the surgery of trauma that is east 2016 guidelines so uh, in this review paper that is systemic review level 3 evidence uh, they have reviewed all the published literature from 1965 to december 2014 and uh, after studying all the articles they have given the, these recommendation uh, 
the background of this paper is that traumatic injury to pancreas is rare but is assured with significant morbidity and mortality including fistula fractures and death